There is an interesting set of tools that we can use to both troubleshoot networks and also verify that networks are operating the way we think they are. So in this nugget, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of tools, including a protocol analyzer, which sounds cool and is, and why it's useful, and also some ways to help verify that features and services like DNS and HTTP are actually working. So let's imagine that you and I are working together at a help desk or a service desk where we take people's calls, they have network challenges, and one of our users, Bob, he calls in and Bob says, hey, I can't open a browser to this server, remoteserver.nuggetlab.com or, or whatever site it is. Um, one of the things that we could do on that computer if we go visit him is on his computer we could get a CLI, a command line interface, uh, like a command prompt. And there's command prompts available on Windows, on Macintosh or Linux. And if we wanted to start troubleshooting that, one thing we could do is we could use a tool called Ping. Now, ping is just a basic connectivity test. And if Bob was trying to get to www.remoteserver, I'll just make it short here, .com or some other website, if we ping and the response comes back and it shows us the IP address that it's trying to reach, we can pretty much rule out DNS as being a primary problem because of the ping whether or not the ping actually functions, if ping shows us the IP address is 67.83.4.9 or whatever IP address, we know that DNS, the application layer service of DNS, is working because it resolved the name to an IP address. Or maybe there's a challenge somewhere else in the network, but with a very quick ping to that name, we can very quickly see whether or not, based on the results, whether or not DNS is working. Another good troubleshooting tip would be from Bob's computer to actually verify and see for ourselves that he is not able to reach the website that he's trying to reach, just to verify that the problem exists. Now, another amazing tool that we can use in computer networks for both learning purposes and for troubleshooting is called a protocol analyzer. And what a protocol analyzer can do, it can capture all of the packets that are being used and then we can dissect those packets and see the actual layers. We can see the transport layer with TCP or UDP. We can see the layer three information with the IP addresses. We can see the layer two information. And a protocol analyzer is gonna rely on us capturing packets somewhere on the network. Maybe we're running it on this computer and we're capturing it here, or we're tied into this switch and we're pulling the packets from there, we're capturing it there, or maybe we're capturing the packets uh, in the path somewhere between Bob and where the final destination is. But a protocol analyzer is a great way to look at the packets and see what's going on inside of them. So without further ado, let me give you a quick demonstration of a protocol analyzer as we look at both a DNS request and also an HTTP web session. So I have in this folder here on the desktop some capture files that have captured various sessions or packets. And the first one I'd like to show you and walk you through is the DNS request and reply. That's when a client was trying to resolve the name of a server to an IP address so it could contact that server based on its IP address. So if we open this up, here in the first entry we have the DNS request and then we have the DNS reply below it. And the cool part is we can open up in this section right here, we can open up the details. So here in the application layer service, we have the DNS query. And if we open up that query, this guy was looking for remoteserver.nuggetlab.com. That was the request. So that's the application layer information from the protocol stack. If we go to the transport layer, layer four, we have information about the transport protocol being used. Here it's UDP. And the destination port was the well-known port of 53 for this request. If we collapse that, at layer three, we have the IP information, including the source and destination IP address. And then at layer two, we have the ethernet header information, including the source and destination layer two addresses involved with this frame of data being sent on the network. And if we close that packet capture, so I'll open up this one for HTTP, we can see it. So here with this first entry selected, the application layer service is HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The application layer service of HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uses at layer four TCP. So here's the TCP information, including the destination port of 80, which is the well-known port that web servers are listening on. And then if we collapse that and take a look at the layer three information, the network layer that has the IP information, and then at layer two, we have the ethernet information. And my first exposure and delight with using a protocol analyzer was back in the 90s at Paramount Pictures when we had a client server application and we were trying to discover 
why isn't it working? Is it the server or the client that is sending a malformed request or not replying to a request? And we were able to, using a protocol analyzer, identify where the problem was, talk to the programmers, and get that network-based application corrected and back on track. And before we end this video, let me also show you a really quick way that we could verify if Bob was having a problem reaching remoteserver.nuggetlab.com. A quick way of verifying whether or not DNS is working, and that is simply going to a command prompt. So here I'm going to right-click on the Windows icon in the bottom left-hand corner, select Command Prompt, and from the command prompt, if we do a ping, and then the name of the server that Bob's trying to reach, in this case it was remoteserver.nuggetlab.com, and press Enter. So that actually worked, but here's the part regarding DNS. Because we are pinging this name, but in the output it showed us that we were actually trying to ping this IP address, that implies that name resolution, in this case DNS, was working correctly. Even if the, the pings had failed, but yet we had an IP address that it gave us, that would at least tell us that DNS is not the problem that we need to solve. It's something else in the network and we can leave DNS alone. In this video, we've taken a look at some tools that we can use to verify network functionality, including ping. We could ping a name and if it returns an IP address, we know that DNS is probably working okay. We also identified that we could use a protocol analyzer to collect packets and then take a very detailed look at those packets. And that tool will become more and more useful the more experience and opportunities you have to work in a computer network. So thanks for joining me in this nugget. I hope it's been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.